Ah, superheroes. Some are big like Superman, some are small like Ant-Man, and some have way better movies than others. But today, I'm not here to talk about the movies. I'm here to talk about the base material, the comics, and more specifically, the X-Men. And no, it is not a team of transgenders. It's actually one of the greatest superhero teams of all time. Our story begins with a man called Charles Xavier. He has a dream that one day mutants and humans can coexist. But there are some who think that people who are different can't be trusted. That's how you know this is fiction. People not getting along because of differences never happens in the real world. <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to the X-Men! The first X-Men team consisted of Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, Jean Grey, aka Marvel Girl, Hank McCoy, aka Beast, Bobby Drake, a.k.a. Iceman, and Warren Worthington III, a.k.a. Angel. After that, mutants such as Mimic, who's technically not a mutant, but whatever, Havoc, Scott's brother Alex, and Polaris, Lorna Day, daughter of the evil mutant Magneto, also joined the team. On one mission, most of the team was captured by Krakoa, the Living Island. Yeah, you heard me. Living Island. The 60s were weird. Most of the writers were probably high. When this happens, Xavier puts together an all-new team of X-Men, consisting of Wolverine, James Logan Hallowit, a Canadian, Nightcrawler, Kurt Wagner, a German, Colossus, Piotr Nikolaevich Rasputin, Piotr, Piotr Nikolaevich Rasputin, Piotr Nikolaevich Rasputin, a Russian, Storm, Aurora Monroe, an African. Thunderbird, John Proudstar, a Native American. Banshee, Sean Cassidy, an Irishman. And Sunfire, Shiro Yoshida, from Japan. Basically, people were complaining about how the teams weren't diverse, and so Marvel was like, hey, let's just pick someone from every stinking continent. Okay, long story short, the new team goes and rescues the original team, and everyone is happy. Until they take a mission to space, and their ship comes hurling down onto Earth at an alarming speed. You know, minor stuff. When they crash into a body of water, obviously, Jean comes flying out saying stuff like, I'm the Phoenix and I'm all powerful. The X-Men, being the great friends that they are, pay no attention to these drastic changes. Jean gets better, or so we think. And she starts to go as Phoenix, which tips nobody off that things are wrong. Anyway, soon after, the villain Mastermind kidnaps Jean and makes her think she's the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club a chess-themed group of rich people that want to change the world for their advantage. You know, everyday stuff. But all the mind-tricking, probably not the right word for it, but let's just roll with it, causes the Dark Phoenix to arise. The Phoenix that had risen from the water was actually a powerful entity that can go dark very easily. Jean, in all actuality, was in a cocoon at the bottom of that water that he crashed in. Anywho, the Phoenix went on to fight the X-Men and destroy an uninhabited planet. That's how you know the stakes are high. Nobody dies. Phoenix slash Jean was then killed, notice the air quotes, and Cyclops quit the X-Men. But don't think it's time to rest. We still got lots of mutant shenanigans to cover, but this video is already getting pretty long, so I'm just gonna make a part two later on.